Hello, this week we're looking at number nine in our series on how to interpret scripture. This time we're looking at creation, colon, Genesis as foundation, part two. We looked at part one last time and if you haven't had the chance to listen to the podcasts that go along with these lessons yet, I encourage you to do so. Those people involved with me in discussing these aspects of how to interpret scripture have done a fine job in helping us think about the really important issues and how we solve them. But this week we're looking primarily, as you see in the material for this time, at Genesis. Genesis 1 and 2, Genesis 5, Genesis 11 and so on. Job 26 does mention that God is still involved in the physical processes of this world. That's good and reassuring to be sure. But the more important thing is the creation accounts. Now, I've looked at some of the creation accounts in other belief systems. The Greeks, the Romans, the Babylonians and so on and they're all to be very frank a little bizarre. The world came about because some god slew another god or there it came out of the foam from from some particular god or they out of the blood or, or whatever. It's very very mm, how could I best say it out of sorts out of kilter with the way we think about things. It's not really something that we could go back and say, well, that's absolutely true and viable. When we go back to Genesis, it's a very different story, isn't it? While it was written for a particular people at a particular time, let's admit that, we certainly can say that what is recorded there is not odd or bizarre. It's a simple account of God creating by speaking things into existence. Now, the fact that we can't do that shouldn't simply mean that we just dismiss it. God is acting as the supreme being of the universe, doing what he can. So let's think about that as we go into our study for this particular time. Uh, one quote from G.K. Chesterton, thinking about origins. It's absurd for the evolutionist to complain that it's unthinkable for an admittedly unthinkable God to make everything out of nothing and then pretend that it is more and more thinkable that nothing should turn itself into everything. I mean, it's a good point. I've argued that a little bit with people who dismiss God, say he's not in the picture at all. The universe came out of the Big Bang, out of a singularity, as if that makes it all clear. Well, my question is, is that scientific? Science is based on observing physical, chemical processes that happen. And can we ever say that something suddenly appeared out of nothing? No. So to say the universe suddenly appeared out of nothing is clearly not scientific. You cannot say that that is testable or observable we were not there and all the rest of it it's a theory okay you can have a theory but does it make any kind of sense and they can say well it makes more sense than god made it well i would respectfully disagree because something coming out of nothing is not something we have ever observed it is not a scientific aspect and when it comes down to God and his involvement, let's be very careful there too. Because the Bible, when we're studying the Bible, how to interpret it this time, it contains a lot of stories, tells us what happened. Doesn't always say whether this was a good thing or a bad thing. Certainly doesn't always say whether God endorsed that or, or wanted that to happen. And I'm very cautious about applying things to God that don't seem to match his nature and character as revealed in Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And to me, that's the most important thing. And then there's that quote from Francis Bacon, it were better to have no opinion of God at all than such an opinion as is unworthy of him. When it comes to all that we believe, let's think about that. Let's not believe something that's unworthy of him. And as we think about creation and all the stories that are out there, Let's go back and say, thank you, Lord, our Father, for making this world and for us to dwell in it.